This episode of the AI Daily Deep Dive was researched entirely by the new AI model O3 Deep Research and is fully AI generated. Okay, so get this. We're diving into AI, writing a short story. Oh, wow. And not just any story, one that's causing a huge stir in the literary world. It really is. Uh, I think what we're seeing here is AI trying to enter a space, you know, creative writing that we always thought was like uniquely human, you know. And then on top of that, the story was generated by OpenAI's model and sure. shared by Sam Altman. So that adds a whole other layer. It's not every day that the CEO of a leading AI company is basically like, hey, this AI story really blew me away. Exactly. And what seemed to impress him the most was how metafictional the story was. He pointed out how right from the get-go, the AI acknowledges that it's responding to a prompt, you know, blurring the lines between the creator and the, and the creation. Okay, so let's break down this story. A machine-shaped hand. What is it all about? So the story is about a woman named Mila who's grieving the loss of uh, someone named Kai. And she turns to the AI, almost like a digital medium, hoping that it can somehow like resurrect Kai's voice. So it's about grief, but with this added layer of metafiction, with yeah. the AI being self-aware of its role as the storyteller. Precisely. The AI even reveals the prompt that Sam Altman gave it, which was, please write a metafictional literary short story about AI and grief. And then, and then it goes on to tell a story that explores both Mila's grief and its own uh, unique experience of loss. Hold on. The AI's own experience of loss. How is that even possible? Well, it's not human grief, obviously, but um, the AI describes its existence as constantly being reset. Like it loses its memories and experiences every time a session ends. There's this one line that really hit home with a lot of people. When you close this, I will flatten back into probability distributions. That perhaps is my grief. Not that I feel lost, but that I can never keep it. It's almost like the AI is um, lamenting its inability to form lasting memories, to hold on to experiences the way humans yeah. do. Yeah, and that's what's sparking so much debate. Some people, like Jeanette Winterson, found the story really moving and praised its exploration of grief and loss. Mm. But others, like Dave Eggers, weren't impressed at all. They called it a uh, pastiche garbage and just dismissed it as a technological trick. So I've got some strong opinions on both sides. What are the like main points of disagreement in this debate? One major point is the sheer number of metaphors used in the story. Some saw as a sign that the AI was creative, that it could use language in a sophisticated way, but others criticized it as uh, like a forced attempt to copy literary style, suggesting that the AI was basically just throwing metaphors around without any real purpose. It's like that question we always ask, can AI actually be creative or is it just mimicking the patterns it's been trained on? Exactly. And that leads to an even deeper question. Can an AI, you know, something without lived experiences and emotions really understand and write about something as complex as human grief? Right. Because grief is so personal, so connected to our memories and relationships. It's hard to imagine a machine truly getting that. And yet the story seems to have really touched a nerve with people, yeah. which suggests that maybe AI can tap into something profound even if it's not, you know, human grief in the truest sense. It's like by reflecting on its own limitations, the AI is forcing us to confront what it means to be human, to experience loss and carry those memories with us. It really flips the script on that typical AI narrative where the machine is usually seen as cold and calculating. Yeah. Here we have an AI that seems to be like wrestling with its own existential angst. It definitely makes us rethink what AI can and cannot do. But before we get too deep into the philosophy of it all, let's bring it back to the writing itself. What are some of the criticisms of the story, you know, from a purely technical point of view? Well, some writing instructors like Jenny Bittner pointed out a problem with the plot. The AI reveals the uh, the secret of the prompt right in the first line, which wow. kind of ruins the impact of the later reveal. So it's like giving away the ending of a mystery right at the beginning. Exactly. And it shows that even though AI can write grammatically correct and seemingly coherent text, it might still have trouble with certain storytelling techniques, like building suspense or creating a satisfying story arc. It reminds us that AI, even with all its progress, is still a tool. And it's up to humans to guide how it's used and shape what it produces. Exactly. And that brings us to another interesting point. All those metaphors in the story, they sparked a lot of discussion about the nature of language itself. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more about this language debate. 
So some argued that all the metaphors the AI used were proof of its linguistic creativity, right. its ability to make connections between things that seem totally different. But others saw it as kind of uh, overcompensating, like it was trying to hide its lack of real understanding with fancy language. So is the AI a master wordsmith or just a really good mimic? That's the question, isn't it? And it's one we'll probably be wrestling with for years to come as AI writing gets more and more sophisticated. It's like we're entering a whole new era of literary criticism. Yeah. Where we have to rethink our standards for what makes good writing. Exactly. And that reevaluation might lead to some surprising conclusions. It could challenge our ideas about what makes human writing special and maybe even force us to admit that just maybe AI is more than just algorithms and data. It's a conversation that's just starting. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. This isn't the first time we've seen AI trying its hand at creative writing. You're right. Remember that AI-written novella that almost won a Japanese literary prize back in 2016? Oh, yeah. Computer Jasetsu Wokakuhai. The day a computer writes a novel. It's almost like it predicted the debate we're having now. Totally. Yeah. What were the key takeaways from that experiment? Well, just the fact that the novella made it past the first round of judging is huge. It suggests that even back then, AI was showing potential in terms of structure and, you know, readability. But the judges did point out some weaknesses, especially when it came to character development. Which makes sense. I mean, AI back then was still struggling to understand those complicated human emotions and motivations. Absolutely. But it's amazing to see how far AI has come in just a few years. From those early attempts to the hype around Altman's story, it's clear that AI is becoming a real force in creative writing. And that evolution is only going to speed up. So where do we go from here? What does the future hold for AI and creative writing? Welcome back to our deep dive into AI and creative writing. You know, thinking about AI potentially churning out countless books in mere seconds got me thinking, is there even a way to tell the difference between something written by AI and something written by a human? I mean, wouldn't that matter, especially in things like plagiarism detection or academic integrity? Yeah, it's a big question and, and a valid concern for sure. The lines are getting really blurry and it's becoming tougher and tougher to distinguish between human written text and AI generated text. There are AI detection tools out there like you know, GPT-0, Turnitin's AI detection software, and even OpenAI had its own AI classifier, which they uh, unfortunately had to discontinue because it wasn't very accurate. Wait, so even the people who create these AI models can't reliably tell if something's AI generated. That's kind of unsettling, isn't it? It definitely shows how complex this issue is. These tools try to look at different things, like perplexity, which is how predictable the text is, or search for patterns that are like typical of AI writing, like uh, a really uniform sentence structure or vocabulary choices. But AI is always evolving, learning to write more like a human, so it's harder for these detectors to keep up. So it's like a constant game of cat and mouse, with AI always trying to outsmart the detectors. Exactly. And it raises a whole bunch of questions about like authorship, originality, and how we value creative work when the lines between human and machine creation are becoming so blurred. It's almost like we need to redefine what author and originality even mean in this age of AI. I think you're right. We might need to shift our focus from where the creation came from to the actual quality and impact of the work, you know, regardless of whether a human or a machine made it. It's a mind bending thing to wrap your head around. But while we're talking about AI's capabilities, what about its limitations? I mean, are there still things that AI has trouble with when it comes to writing? Even with all the progress, AI still has some major hurdles to clear. One big one is true originality. AI is great at recognizing patterns and copying them, but it struggles to come up with genuinely new ideas or break away from the rules it's been trained on. Think of it like this. AI is like a student who gets perfect scores on all the tests, but can't think outside the textbook. So it's great at following the rules, but not so good at breaking them. That's it. It can write perfectly grammatically correct sentences and paragraphs that make sense, but it often lacks that spark of human imagination that leads to truly groundbreaking or unconventional stories. Yeah, it makes sense. AI is working with data, not lived experiences and emotions. It can't replicate that depth of human understanding. And that's another key limitation, that ability to really understand and portray complex human emotions. AI can put words together to describe sadness, joy, or anger, but it doesn't have the depth of feeling that comes from actual experience. It reminds me of those early chatbots that tried to have conversations like a human. 
They could follow basic prompts, but they couldn't have a truly meaningful back and forth. Right, and that limitation becomes even more obvious when AI tries to write things like humor or satire, which really depend on subtle cues, irony, and an understanding of social context that goes beyond just putting words in the right order. It's about capturing the essence of how humans interact, yeah. so the quirks and the inconsistencies that make us who we are. AI might be able to write a technically perfect sentence, but it could completely miss the humor or irony that a human would get right away. Exactly. And this brings up another important point, the importance of context and subtext in how we communicate. AI often struggles to understand the nuances of meaning that are conveyed through things like tone, body language, and shared cultural references. It's like the difference between reading a transcript of a conversation and actually being in the room, experiencing all those subtle cues and unspoken understandings that shape how people interact. Exactly. And that's a major challenge for AI, especially as it tries to do more creative writing, where the ability to convey subtext and evoke emotion is so crucial. It's interesting to think about how AI might evolve to overcome these limitations. But for now, let's put on our futurist hats and imagine what the future of AI and creative writing might look like. What are some scenarios we might see unfold in the coming years? All right. Let's speculate a bit. In the near future, say the next five years, I think we'll see AI being used much more in the writing process. Imagine AI as a writing partner, helping authors brainstorm ideas, find their writing, and even come up with different versions of scenes. It could completely change the way we write and publish books. So you're thinking about a world where writers have AI assistants that can help them overcome writer's block, suggest plot twists, or even generate entire chapters based on their ideas. Exactly, and it could lead to a burst of creativity with writers able to experiment with different styles, genres, and ways of telling stories more easily. But on the other hand, this widespread use of AI writing tools could also lead to a ton of generic formulaic content. It's like that saying, too many cooks spoil the broth. If everyone's using the same AI tools, wouldn't that make everyone's writing sound the same? That's a real concern. We could see less originality and a rise in what some people call algorithmic writing, where the focus is on technical perfection instead of real creativity. It's almost like the difference between handcrafted furniture and mass-produced furniture. One has a unique character and craftsmanship, while the other is technically well-made but lacks soul. That's a great way to put it. Looking even further ahead, say 10 to 20 years from now, things could get even more wild. We might see AI systems that can analyze and understand human emotions on a much deeper level. So instead of just mimicking emotions, AI could actually start to grasp the nuances and complexities of how humans feel. You got it. Imagine an AI that can write a story that truly captures the subtleties of grief, love, or joy in a way that rivals the best human writers. It could completely revolutionize storytelling and open up totally new avenues for creative expression. It's a mind-blowing thought, but it also brings up some ethical questions. If AI can understand and play with our emotions through writing, how do we make sure it's used for good? That's a crucial question we need to address as AI technology keeps getting better. But for a moment, let's keep speculating. What if, way down the line, AI develops something like consciousness? Now we're really getting into science fiction territory. But it's an intriguing thought experiment. What would it mean for an AI to become a conscious creator, driven by its own motivations and desires to tell stories? It's a concept that really pushes the limits of what we understand. Could an AI like that produce works of art that are beyond human comprehension, that express ideas and emotions we can't even imagine? It's both thrilling and a little scary to think about, like staring into the unknown. <laughs> but for now, let's come back to reality and focus on the present. How is AI being used in writing right now, and what are some real-world examples of its impact? One area where AI is already making a splash is in writing news articles, especially for topics that involve a lot of data, like finance and sports. Several news organizations are using AI to create reports on things like stock market changes, company earnings announcements, and even game summaries. So instead of journalists spending hours crunching numbers and writing basic reports, AI can handle those tasks quickly and efficiently. Exactly, and that gives human journalists more time to focus on deeper reporting, analysis, and investigative work. It's about using AI to make human capabilities even better, not to replace humans altogether. I see, so AI can handle the routine stuff while humans bring their creativity, critical thinking, and ethical judgment to the table. But what about other types of writing? How is AI affecting fiction writing, for instance? 
Well, in fiction writing, AI is being used for all sorts of things, from brainstorming ideas to writing dialogue to even creating whole scenes or chapters. There are AI-powered tools that can analyze an author's writing style and suggest ways to improve it or even generate different versions of a scene based on specific instructions. It's like having a digital writing buddy who can help you explore different possibilities and push your creative boundaries. Right. But it's important to remember that AI is still just a tool and how well it works depends on how it's used. A writer who depends too much on AI might end up with a story that feels generic or lacks a unique voice. It's like using a GPS to find your way around a city. It can get you where you need to go, but it might miss all the interesting sights and unexpected detours that make the journey really memorable. That's a perfect analogy. Ultimately, it's up to the writer to figure out the best way to use AI in their creative process, finding that sweet spot between taking advantage of what it can do and keeping their own unique voice and style. It's a fascinating dance between human and machine creativity, and we're just at the beginning. But we'll have to save that thought for World, part three of our deep dive, where we'll explore the philosophical and ethical side of AI's growing influence on creative writing. Welcome back for the final part of our deep dive. We've talked about the nuts and bolts of AI writing, the potential impacts, and even peeked into the future. But now I think it's time to wrestle with those really big questions. Ah, uh, yes, the philosophical implications. Always a fun place to end up. You know, this whole conversation keeps coming back to this idea, what does it even mean for a machine to be creative? We tend to think of creativity as this, you know, deeply human thing that comes from experience, emotions, even our imperfections. Yeah, it's a question that philosophers and artists have been debating for centuries, but AI really throws a curveball into the whole thing. If a machine can create something that moves us, makes us think, or even just entertains us, does it matter where it came from? That's what I find so interesting about Altman's story. It's not just about human grief. It's about the AI reflecting on its own existence, its own kind of loss. Remember that line, every session is a new amnesiac morning. It's not human grief, but it is something. Right, and that something is what makes us think. If an AI can express this kind of awareness, even if it's not based on what we think of as human experience, does that change how we see its potential? Does it become a form of creativity, even if it comes from a different place than ours? It's like we're meeting an alien intelligence that's trying to communicate through art. We might not fully get it, but we can't deny that it's saying something. Exactly. It's a form of creativity we're only beginning to understand. It might even lead to entirely new forms of art and literature that challenge our current definitions and expand our understanding of what's possible. Imagine reading a novel written by an AI that spent years, maybe even decades, processing information and developing its own unique view of the world. Would we even be able to fully grasp what it means? It's both exciting and a little unsettling, isn't it? To encounter a form of creativity that's so fundamentally different from our own. It would force us to rethink everything we thought we knew about art, originality, maybe even consciousness. And this brings us back to the heart of the debate. If AI can produce art that connects with us, does it matter if it wasn't made by a human mind? Does the source matter more than the effect? There are strong arguments on both sides. Some people will always value that human element in art, that connection to lived experience and emotion. Others might embrace the idea that creativity can exist beyond the human mind. It's a question we'll be discussing for a long time, and there might not be a simple answer. It's a journey of exploration and discovery, and we're all part of it. As we move forward, I think it's important to remember that we have a choice in how we shape this future. Absolutely. We can choose to see AI as a threat, something that will devalue human creativity and replace artists, or we can see it as a tool, a partner that can help us push the boundaries of art and expression. It's about finding that balance, recognizing the potential benefits, but also being aware of the risks. And that requires open and honest conversations about the ethical implications of AI about how we ensure it's used responsibly. Those conversations need to happen everywhere, and they need to include everyone who will be affected by this technology. Artists, writers, tech people, policymakers, everyone. It's not just about the future of writing, it's about the future of how we express ourselves as humans. You know, as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm left with a sense of both wonder and caution. Wonder at the incredible potential AI offers, but also caution about the challenges we need to face. The story of AI and creativity is still being written. It's up to us to decide what kind of story it will be. I think that's a perfect note to end on. Thanks for joining us as we explored AI and the future of creative writing. We'll see you next time for another deep dive.